Hey folks, this is John. It's just a fact of life that PLCs don't want to change and software on your laptop does. So sometimes software versions can cause issues. I think Codasys is probably the most finicky platform I've worked with in this regard. So I thought I'd make a video walking through the process. Let's jump in. So my version of Codasys right here is version 3.5 service pack 19. And the file that I'm going to open is service pack version 15. And this is one of those minor revisions that I wouldn't expect to ever have to even think about, but in Codasys world, we do. Let's take a look. This project has both a PLC a controller and a visualization project in it. So it will look a little bit more complicated and messy. It's, it's not actually any harder, but uh, note that you might not see all of the errors and things that I do if it's just a PLC program. I also want to note, I haven't ever lost any data going through this process, but there have been a couple of times I was worried I might because things weren't working out quite the way I expected. So if that's a concern to you, do make a copy back up your project before you try to upgrade it. So the first thing we'll see is it already knows that this was service pack 15 version of the software, and it's offering two different paths to update things. In my case, this is still in a development phase. This is not installed in anything. I'm just making these programs to uh, teach people on the internet, right? So there's no physical PLC. If you do have a physical PLC installed somewhere, you might want to click on this. This will install that version of software so that you're not changing your program files at all. You, you'll have exactly the same thing that is installed in the field. That's important if you don't want to go through the effort of updating whatever is in the field, the, the PLC version, or maybe multiple PLCs or devices. So I'm going to go this method. This is usually what I end up doing anyway, and it's, uh, I think, a little more complicated. So I click on this. Yes, it's in a development phase. I want to update everything that's in the project. Click on Finish. We'll give it 10 seconds to spin through things. The first thing it gives us is a, a window talking about library differences. So there was a library version 3.5.15 before, and now it's recommending with my new installation, I have a newer library uh, version 17. And there are multiple tabs here, all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to click set all to newest. Why not? I think this makes sense. Uh, yes, do update all of that. Click OK. Let it spin through that again. And if I did not want to update to these latest libraries, I would have to go back and install the older ones. So that's why I'm doing that. I, I don't want to have more versions of things that I, that I need. OK, next it's asking, do we want to change the format of the file that we're going to save? So you might think about this like uh, in terms of Microsoft Office or something. There are the legacy file formats that didn't have all the features that today's versions have. So sometimes you're saving things in compatibility mode. That's what this is asking. Do you want to save it in compatibility mode or do a full update for that file type? If we click yes, it's going to update everything, but it won't be openable by that older version, the Service Pack 15. If we click no, it'll be openable by that older version, but we may not have all the features. Things might not save quite right. I don't know all of the details of what that might affect. Go ahead and try it if you wish. I'm going to click on yes, because yes, I do want to do a full update of this. OK, the window went away, and then it cranked away for a little while. If you're anything like me, you're going to look down here and say, wow, that's a lot of errors. Let's start dealing with that. I'm going to walk you through a couple things here that you might look at, but I'm going to say hold your horses on these errors down here. Don't actually try and deal with them yet. First of all, it's complaining about library differences, right? And we told it to update all the libraries. It seems a little weird that it's asking for library stuff, right? Again, I'm not going to do this right now, but I'm going to, the, there have been times when this has been helpful. So I'll show you what it is. So first is we can update, there's a placeholder, which means it's looking for a library that it can't find, so it has a placeholder in the project. And we can say, hey, update that to the newest version. And we can go down the line here, and that will likely resolve most of the issues we have here. But we'll have to do it 37 times, and it won't resolve all the issues. We can also go to the placeholders dialog, part of the library manager. You see the library manager in the background here right now. 
click on that, you'll notice that there are a lot of libraries it's looking for, and it's been able to find a couple of them, but it's it hasn't been able to find a whole lot here. So good thing to be aware of. Occasionally I've had situations where I might come up here in the library manager. If you don't have this open, uh, double click on this here, you'll get the library manager. Sometimes downloading missing libraries helps. Sometimes there's a button that shows up here that says something like update all placeholders to the latest version, which is equivalent to clicking on all these individually and saying update placeholder to new version. That again will clear some of these errors. But before we do any of that, this is probably the problem. Uh, in my experience, this is usually the thing that needs updating. So we, we ran it through the auto update and now the program wants to run on a different version of the controller than it thinks the controller is. And I don't know why that auto update process couldn't handle that for us also, but if we right click on this device, go to update, it already knows what kind of device it is and it's offering the version 3.5.19. I'm gonna click on update. We'll give it a little time to spin its wheels again and, and do whatever changes are happening in the background. It's not gonna tell you when it's been successful, but the window went, it was kind of grayed out for a little bit and then came back. So anyway, this, this is updated now. I'm just gonna click on close. Notice that the squiggly line went away on this. All of those red lines went away. All of these errors went away. I should be able to click on compile and we'll just give it a second to run through that. Should come back with no errors. And that means we didn't need to do all those little things, downloading new versions of libraries or anything else. And there we are, zero errors. I've worked in a lot of different kinds of PLC packages. And for me, this was a very confusing process. I hope walking through this with you makes it easier for you to do the same thing in your programming. All right, cheers. Thanks for watching. There's one thing I like more than making these videos. It's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.